You guys, we just love moments like this. CNN anchors get absolutely stunned when CNN's John Miller tells them about the realities of leftist policies like bail reform live on TV. I think it's been a while since I've heard an awkward silence as loud as this. We're gonna be jumping into this moment in just one second, but first, welcome back to the channel, everyone. Thank you all for being here. If you could please really quickly smash that like button for the algorithm, I would greatly appreciate it as it does actually help with the channel. I know it's annoying, everyone asks it, but it does actually help get the videos out there to reach more people. So let's just go ahead and jump right on in. We have a tweet here from Brianna Lyman over at Daily Caller. She says, watch, CNN's Erica Hill, quite literally stunned speechless after CNN's John Miller said migrants steal in New York, by the way, not migrants, illegal immigrants. We gotta stop using their language. Illegal immigrants steal in New York, spend in Florida, but return to New York because they'll actually be held accountable in the Sunshine State. That's a big shocker. Let's go ahead and watch this. In the back. Right, we, don't, we don't touch our police officers. We don't touch anybody. Thank you, everybody. I mean, we're hearing a change when it comes to immigration in general from President Biden on down. Do you hear her talk about that? It is also directly related to the fact that these were police officers. Does that have any impact? Does that change anything? Before we jump in, just really quick, Kathy Hochul right there was cut off a little bit. She's saying deport them, get you know, don't touch police officers, get rid of them. That wasn't her language the other day. She probably had to talk with consultants and see what the people would be favorable of before she actually you know, said, get rid of these guys that just assaulted police officers, or at least allegedly assaulted police officers. Also, t we're hearing change top down, President Biden <laughs> top down about their stance on all this. Really? You know, last month, we, we just set a historic record for most illegal crossings at the southern border. So perhaps they're acting tough. There's literally no action there at all. In fact, there's only action to sabotage Texas securing the border. We'll move on. Well, it's so complicated because, you know, you're a New Yorker. You move through the city every day as I do. We see these people. We touch these people. They're out looking for work. They're delivering our food. They're at the gas stations and the car wash. Uh, I mean, these are people who came in waves, you know, 170,000 probably to New York City. Um, but within that group, this hardworking, you know, throngs of people in search of hope and a better life, there is this one percenter, you know, criminal element that looks at a different opportunity here. These individuals, I went over their rap sheets yesterday, mm -hmm. multiple charges, grand larceny, robbery, attempted robbery, grand larceny, grand larceny. Uh, this particular crew operated on mopeds and scooters. They were doing organized retail theft. They were doing snatches on the street, iPhones, iPads, clothing, so on and so forth. Uh, one of them that they are still seeking has 10 charges on one day because he's part of a pattern that's been going on. And I'm looking at the dates that their arrest started, which is probably close to when they got here. They've only been here a couple of months. So what the detectives are telling me is they have crews here that operate in New York, do all their stealing, then go to Florida to spend the money and then come back. And I'm like, well, why don't they just stay and steal in Florida? And they said, because there you go to jail. Oh. Great reporting. <laughs> yeah, that was, that is absolutely brutal. I'm not even sure that uh, John Miller meant to really drop that live. It almost seems like it was just kind of accident. He was saying what somebody else was telling him. <laughs> and they're just looking at each other. Oh, did he just, did he just say that uh, live? He he just said that? Oh, <laughs> oh, okay. Oof, that's a awkward moment right there. Awkward moment. It's it's so unbelievable that it's almost like shocking when they're telling the truth because this stuff's just common sense, right? Like, y yeah, in Florida, they're gonna lock you up if you're going around robbing everywhere. But with bail reform in New York City, you have absolutely no problem with that. <laughs> Definitely not gonna get deported. So it's just such an amazing moment right there with how awkward it is. <laughs> He's looking at her like, uh, should we say anything? Should we defend the position? What, what do we do? Nothing? Hey, thanks for coming in. Really appreciate you. All right, everyone, let's take a few moments to talk about today's sponsor. You already know about Sierra Whiskey Company, the folks that brought you Undertack, the revolutionary boxers that are changing the game. Well, 
they just released a bunch of new products that I gotta tell you about before I go on a rant about how great their boxers are. Now they offer socks, joggers, t-shirts, and sweatshirts. All are made in America and embody the same rugged spirit you've come to expect. Their socks are made of battle weave wool that's five times stronger than Merino. Their ring spun cotton hoodies and joggers are insanely comfortable and every patriot needs the EDC t-shirt three pack. Remember, under tack aren't your typical men's boxers. They're made with modal. Think of like cotton, just way better. It's 50% more moisture wicking, antibacterial, and way softer. They stay in place with a sturdy yet comfortable extra wide waistband and the fly design is brilliantly straightforward. Undertech is durable, ultralight, fade resistant, and shrink resistant. And if that isn't enough, you guys, they donate a portion of their profits to organizations actively in the fight against human trafficking. You guys, these are the only boxers I've been wearing for well over a year now. Stock your drawers today. Undertech.com, that's undertech.com. Get 20% off site-wide with the off code KLUG20. You guys support businesses that do not hate you. That is undertech.com, under T-A-C.com. Off code KLUG20 for 20% off. I'll put a link down in the description below. Let's get back to the video. A couple things that John Miller was bringing up right here that I just wanted to address before I moved on. Obviously, we're talking about the migrants that allegedly beat the crap out of two police officers and, uh, you know, you just go to jail, get booked, released, same day, no bail, and you got to continue doing what you're doing until you obviously inevitably kill somebody, which is essentially how these policies work. And don't forget, when they inevitably do, if they use a firearm, they're going to blame law-abiding gun owners for that. So very convenient process that, that they have going on. But he did mention, you know, 170,000 going to New York City. Under Biden, we're seeing minimum 8 million illegals coming into the country. 170,000, you're having these issues with 170,000 people. What do you think the other 8 to 9 to 10 million people, what do you, you think is happening to the southern border states and cities? What do you think they're dealing with? Also, he mentions 1%. Of course, a lot of good people are breaking into the country illegally. There's probably a lot of good people that just want to work. They see it as convenient. They don't have to wait in line. They don't have to come legally. They don't have to do any of that. They could just come, you know, break into the country and get released and not show up for their court date when it comes to claiming asylum, which is what the cartels are telling them to do because it's obviously working. They get released into the country, at least under Joe Biden's administration. But he mentions right here, John Miller mentions right here, 1% are committing crimes or, or, or up to this stuff. That number is based in no reality at all. In fact, we'll talk a little bit more about the crime rate towards the end of this video and why that number is incorrect. But he's just thrown that out there. He has absolutely no clue. But even if it is 1%, which it's not, even if it is 1%, doesn't that basically mean that, you know, that's 1% more than the city had before, 1% of criminals more than they had before. Do they need that with everything that's going on? So obviously this is about the migrants that allegedly attacked the NYPD officers. A little bit of catch up right here, just in case you missed it. I know a lot of people have been seeing this, but a tweet from uh, Colin Rugg, alleged illegal immigrants who assaulted NYPD officers near Times Square flip off cameras with no remorse after being released without bail. On the issue of deportation, New York Governor Kathy Hochul, this is how she kind of shipped her language, said that she was going to be checking into whether or not they should be deported. <laughs> it's, it's, it's funny how there's all this language around, uh, maybe, yeah, well, maybe, maybe. Not a absolutely, what, <laughs> of, of course, of course you're gone. You just attacked an NYPD officer too, in fact. Of course you're gone. Which, in a serious country, that would be the language being used. It's not radical language. It's more than absurd that we had to wait for that to happen instead of just dealing with it initially. You enter the country illegally, you're gone. You can claim asylum, remain in Mexico, stay out there, you can do that. But I did want to share this video just to show anyone that is catching up on this issue. Just into Fox News now, NYPD making two more arrests, illegal immigrants and that attack on officers. Those suspects also allegedly stole an officer's cell phone. Well, that'll help them track you down. <laughs> so a fifth illegal immigrant accused of attacking two New York City police officers over the weekend showed no remorse or regret. He was seen, as you can see, giving his two middle fingers to the cameras moments after being released without bail. Yeah, how amazing is that? I mean, if there's one image that perfectly encapsulates the Biden regime in this term, 
it's this image right here. We come into the country illegally. We get free health care. We get free housing. We get free food. We get free travel. I, if you're watching this, let me know if you get all that stuff. That's, that's pretty interesting. As an American citizen, we have all these issues. We have homeless veterans. We have people that can't afford rent. We have people that can't afford food. We have people that can't afford all sorts of things in America right now. We have so many issues. We just got done with people losing their businesses. A massive percentage of people losing their businesses, certainly in Los Angeles, the places that actually locked down, forced to lock down, destroyed their lives, and then follow that with uh, BLM rioting, Antifa rioting and looting for an entire summer straight in 2020. Now you have economic issues. You have all sorts of issues going on. And just add a illegal immigration crisis with 10 million people entering the country. We don't know who they are. And this is, this is what they think. They come here, some, not saying all, but some come here, they commit crimes, and they know that it's a joke. This is not how a serious country operates. This is the image of the Biden administration. So obviously, NYPD officers are incredibly upset, as they usually are in cases like this, but they have absolutely no systemic support in New York City. Here's a couple words. Why aren't they in jail right now? They brutally attacked a New York City police officer and a lieutenant. Our criminal justice system is upside down. It fails every day. Why aren't they in jail right now? Yeah, and we understand. You know, there's a lot of NYPD officers that really do want to enforce these laws. You're probably in the wrong city. At this point, I'm, I'm shocked that there's even a NYPD officer still in New York City working. I, I, I'm shocked that they're all just not transferring around the country because with that happening, them getting booked, them going to jail, the illegal immigrants, and getting released, no bail, is just the biggest smack in the face, as if they weren't being smacked in the face the last few years. And for a lot of people saying, well, hey, it's New York City. You know, they voted for this. They voted for this. They deserve this. Totally. <laughs> yeah, that's true. However, when it comes to this issue, we're talking about releasing criminals back on the street that can travel to other areas. Like John Miller was mentioning in the beginning of this video, they go down to Florida, you know, all over the country. So yes, although it is a New York City issue and it's insane and we're just living in this upside down dystopian world, it does affect the rest of the country. Look no further than this. Police believe four of the migrants Again, with that word. Four of the illegal immigrants, criminal aliens, arrested in cop beatdown near Times Square, fled on a bus to California. Now, you may just be laughing because I'm in California and you're not because you, would be, you wouldn't be crazy enough to, to live in a blue state. <laughs> but just because it's just California doesn't mean it's not going to be somewhere else. Four of the migrants cut loose without bail after allegedly ganging up on two NYPD cops near Times Square may be on the run. Post has learned cops believe the group could have hopped on a bus bound for California on Wednesday after giving phony names to a church-affiliated nonprofit group that helps migrants, again with that word, see how the, the left wants everybody to use that word. I'm only reading it because I'm reading the article, basically. Helps illegal immigrants get rides out of the city according to law enforcement sources. So they're coming to California. How great is that? Because guess what? California has similar rules. They're not going to get deported. They're going to have no issues in California. In fact, with California, Los Angeles County, one, one major issue for Los Angeles County is you'll have a lot of illegal immigrants and a lot of gangs that actually seek out young men exactly like these young men. Exactly like these young men and say, hey, 18th Street Gang, hop in. We, we, we can be your family. We can be your support. We can be your backup. They recruit young illegal immigrants and ICE can't do anything about it. Local police departments can't do anything about it. They can't deport them. It's a sanctuary city. They can't do anything about it. They know that people are illegal. They know that they're in gangs like MS-13 or 18th Street or whatever gang is. Uh, there's a handful of Latino gangs and just around the country, but certainly in Los Angeles. They know that they're illegal, but they can't do anything about it. They literally have to wait for that person to commit a violent crime and maybe inevitably kill somebody. 18th Street Gang, about 30 to 50,000 members strong. It's reported that 80% of this gang is illegal immigrants. 
goes to show a lot of those people saying, well, hey, just, uh, you know, the crime rates are, are lower. We're going to start hearing a lot of that argument. The crime rates are lower with illegal immigrants. So don't worry about it. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, 18th Street Gang, 50,000 members strong, 80% of which are illegal. Oh, yeah, just don't even worry. That's okay. That's, don't worry about it. It's already a national crisis. It's not just the issue of crime. It's the issue of what do they have to gain by bringing all of these people in. Under Obama, you had a bunch of women and children, right? Or at least that's what they were saying. Under Biden, it's largely fighting age males right now coming across the southern border. What do they have to gain? A lot of people have brought up how they're trying to get them into the United States military. Could be the case. Another big picture would just be a lot more simple. The chances of new citizens voting Democrat are incredibly likely. Democrats know this. It's incredibly beneficial for them. So why would they not just flood the country with more illegal immigrants? But I actually think, I would actually possibly take this a step further. You have Donald Trump that's pledging to deport 20 million people, 15 million people, if he becomes president. I'm sure that's going to be a big issue for any Republican president, whoever is the next one. I'm not talking about this term. I'm talking about even next terms. That's going to be a big issue, trying to get rid of these people. If you're a Democrat and you want to bring in 10 to 20 million illegal immigrants, it's pretty common sense that a lot of these young men, a lot of these men, these fighting age males, are going to make that process a little bit difficult. If you're having people attacking police officers, and they've been here for a couple months, what do you think these people are going to be doing when they're getting deported? Creating just absolute chaos. Lastly, I'll end it right here, you guys. You're going to start hearing a lot more of this argument being made. But here it is on, on Twitter.com right now. Elon Musk saying, uh, this could have been your family. It was someone's family referring to an illegal immigrant that ended up getting a DUI, killing a mother and her son. Somebody responds, if you want to reduce crime, you're better off deporting white people who commit more of it than immigrants. What is their basis for saying this stuff? You'll have uh, charts right here. Undocumented immigrants commit less crime than native born citizens. Huh. Is that true? <laughs> well, first of all, I'll make this a quick point. It's crime that shouldn't even be in the country. How is this debatable? What are you talking about? That DUI that killed somebody, that shouldn't have even been in the country. Do you not understand how, how, how that doesn't make sense? These people advocating for that. These homicides, those are homicides that shouldn't have even happened in the country. So just first of all, but second of all, let's actually address the argument that's being made here. Undocumented immigrants commit less crime than native born citizens. All crimes, we have homicides, which are still pretty high. Larceny, these studies are absolute garbage because there are states, blue states, that deliberately avoid documenting illegal immigrant crime. So California, for instance, when I'm doing my research, they won't produce it. They won't give you the numbers. Texas will. And a lot of the Texas numbers are very, very shocking. You will find a lot of like federal, there'll be maybe federal data where it comes to like federal drug crimes, illegal immigrants, undocumented immigrants. Illegal immigrants make up about a quarter of federal drug crimes. They don't make up a quarter of the population. So there is the issue of states do not report it. So you can't accurately gather that information. Also, illegal immigrants won't report crimes nearly to the extent that legal immigrants and or native born Americans will report crimes. So there is that fear as well to where they're underreported because people actually fear getting deported. There's a ton of issues around this. The data is not there. If somebody is bringing this argument up, they just there's no basis for it. There can be little studies like this, but they're dealing with very bad data. Anyways, you guys, let me know what you think about this video down in the comment section below. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to smash that like button for the algorithm. If you're not subscribed already, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification button so you're notified next to my posts. And I'll catch you all in the next video.